Thank you very much, um, Martin. So I will start uh, by presenting the, the study on and the research on humanitarian negotiations in southern Kurdistan and Blue Nile. Um, just quickly to remind us of the research objectives, the research objectives were twofold. First, to understand uh, SPLM North perspectives, structures and motivations for engagement with aid actors. And secondly, to look at aid agency perspectives and their experience of engagement with both the SPLM North and the government of Sudan uh, on humanitarian issues and any lessons learned that can be gleaned from this engagement. Um, interviews were conducted with a wide variety variety of actors, including the SPLM North, uh, international and local agencies, donors, academics, local experts and civilians. Um, but we did not uh, talk to government of Sudan officials as we were denied a visa to Khartoum. Um, just to give you a quick background um, before presenting the key findings of the report um, on the current situation. Um, there are dire needs, uh, dire humanitarian needs with over 1.4 million um, displaced people in both government held areas and SPLM North controlled areas of southern Kordofan and Blue Nile and around uh, 220,000 refugees currently in South Sudan and Ethiopia. Um, the situation is particularly dire in the SPLM North controlled areas where access uh, has been blocked by the government of Sudan since the beginning of the conflict in 2011. In government controlled areas, there is an ongoing humanitarian response, but with severe restrictions, uh, which means there's almost no access by international staff and also severe restrictions on movements and monitoring. Um, many of those who remain in SPLM North areas um, have sought protection from ongoing aerial bombardment in caves and have very limited access to food, water and health care. Um, FUSENET currently predicts the highest level of acute um, food insecurity, a phase four emergency levels, um, among IDPs in, in SPLM co North controlled areas of Southern Kordofan and Blue Nile. Um, this just as a quick background on the humanitarian situation currently. Um, turning to the um, SPLM North perspectives, um, first of all, a quick overview of its um, humanitarian structures and policies. Um, while there's no formal written SPLM North aid policy, there are high level humanitarian instructions that have been put in place very early on in the conflict. Um, there's a dedicated humanitarian wing in the SPLM North, which is separate from political and military wings, um, though at the leadership level there continues to be some blurring of political and humanitarian functions, which often makes engagement more challenging. Um, there is the Sudan Relief and Rehabilitation Agency, the SRA, um, a civilian structure that, like you know, other civilian structures, was also in place during the last war in the Nuba Mountains, um, uh, which is the main coordination body for humanitarian assistance. This agency is mandated to lead and coordinate humanitarian activities in the SPLM North Health Areas and was established as a counterpart to HAC, the Humanitarian Aid Commission, in which is in the government health areas. Um, humanitarian negotiations are generally conducted at the senior leadership level of the SRA or by the humanitarian negotiations team. Decisions are generally adhered to at the local level um, and agencies wanting to operate in SPLM North areas um, must contact the SRA and go through the SRA to obtain permits to work in the areas. Um, turning to, to views on aid agencies, I mean aid agencies are generally welcomed and are encouraged to operate in SPLM North areas. Um, the SPLM North is however very suspicious of actors coming from the north, so there are certain restrictions in place, uh, particular particularly regarding um, certain national NGOs and national staff to operate in SPLM North areas, um, and this applies particularly to the Sudanese Red Crescent um, from the SPLM North side. Um, despite initially very positive attitudes um, towards international agencies and much initial hope for what international engagement could bring, um, the ongoing aid blockade and what what the SPLM North sees as a lack of international engagement has created increasing disappointment and resentment on, be on, on the SPLM North side. And this has in part been fueled by what they perceive to be a lack of enforcement, not only of the UN Security Council resolution, but also of other agreements that have been negotiated and which they feel have not been adequately implemented or followed up. And this resentment um, has also been fueled by a perceived lack of engagement and in action on uh, the part of international humanitarian actors, in particular with regard to pushing for humanitarian access to SPLM North areas, while also continuing to provide assistance in government held areas. Um, this increasing frustration and feeling um, of marginalization on behalf of the SPLM risks to, to lead to a hardening of positions and a 
increasing disengagement from the negotiation processes um, and to favor more non-negotiated agreements. Um, in terms of views of specific um, aid actors, there's increasing apprehension with regards to the UN in part of what the SPLM North sees as a lack of UN leadership to engage with them and also in SPLM North areas, um, which they also see in contrary to you know, the long and strong role that the UN has played in Sudan previously during previous wars to engage with both parties to the conflict and to negotiate agreements. Um, but also this, uh, this negative view is a result of, of unmissed poor performance both during the CPA and also after the conflict has broken out. Um, and where UNMIS was still present for about four months of the conflict and wrapping up its mandate, um, but failed to patrol and protect civilians uh, during the, the initial months of 2011. Um, and interviews revealed that this view of UNMIS has in part tarnished the image of the wider UN agencies in the eyes of many, not only of the SPLM North, but also of the civilians we interviewed in the areas. Mm, INGOs are perceived in a slightly better light, particularly also for historical reasons of more engagement and more engagement at the initial part of the conflict, but there's equally much disappointment that INGOs pulled out of the SPLM North areas after the beginning of the conflict and uh, for fear of compromising the operations in other areas of Sudan. Turning to um, aid agency engagement um, and, and perspectives of aid agencies of engagement both with the SPLM and the government, um, there has been limited engagement on behalf of the international community with the SPLM North, in particular by actors who are present in Sudan for fear of repercussions um, and compromising their programs in other areas of Sudan, such as Darfur. Um, many agencies and both INGOs and UN um, prefer not to be seen to be engaging, either directly with the SPLM, but even with the limited number of local civil society actors or local organizations who are on the ground in SPLM areas monitoring need. So there's been an apprehension to engage even with them in terms of gathering information or monitoring of need as well. Similarly, um, there have also been no collective strategies for engagement with the government of Sudan on negotiations for both access to SPLM North areas as well as to government at areas of Southern Kordofan and Blue Nile. Um, there was much debate about agencies and in the humanitarian country team around the ethics of continuing to provide assistance only in government-held areas while access to SPLM North areas remains blocked. But no co common positions were found. And so individual agencies have tended to adopt a variety of approaches um, to negotiations with the GOS. Some, for example, hope that providing assistance in government-held areas will build trust and eventually lead for um, or help to engage more in SPLM areas and potentially help to, to negotiate cross-line um, solutions. Others have drawn more clearly uh, red lines and have withdrawn completely. Others are trying to negotiate at different levels with the hack at the local level um, and, are, and are trying to, to capitalize on long-standing connections with, uh, with actors on all sides. Um, the aid agencies interviewed um, felt that there was inadequate leadership by the UN regarding humanitarian engagement with all sides. Um, aid agencies um, highlighted that a stronger UN OCHA, for example, could have helped in ensuring both a more strategic and sustained engagement with both sides. And in the absence of this, many NGOs felt that um, an undue burden was placed on them and that they had to bear a lot of the risks associated with this engagement, with the lack of a common framework. And in the absence of any progress on humanitarian access in SPLM North areas, there are increasing numbers of aid agencies who have become frustrated and are considering alternatives, including non-consensual approaches. There are, however, very strong divisions among the international community and among donors, and you know, these divisions <coughs> run very deep about the feasibility, if any, of, of alternatives. Many agencies interviewed felt that there had been too much emphasis, for example, on the divisive issue of legality to the detriment of a wider discussion of you know, what would be feasible alternatives, innovative approaches to engage um, in, in the face of ac access that continues to be blocked in SPLM areas. Um, those who are actively engaging with the SPLM and considering options are very few, obviously due to high security risks, but also tend to be those with programs outside of Sudan. Um, Currently, non-consensual access to SPLM areas is extremely limited and mainly done by local organizations on the ground already, local civil society organizations, faith-based actors with extremely limited means and is not meeting any of the enormous needs that are on the ground. 
And of course, you know, this exposes the local actors to enormous security risks. Um, to sum up, uh, just some key recommendations that are coming out of this research. Um, there are a few key points um, to highlight um, that were coming out of the research and what people felt could be potential way forward, potential way f ways forward. Mm. The discussion among the humanitarian community to date has been extremely polarized. So um, many feel that GOS consent uh, to the government of Sudan consent to humanitarian access through current initiatives is unlikely and feel that you know we need to start thinking about alternatives. Yet um, options should not necessarily be presented as either or. Um, I think one key recommendation is that you know there needs to be a continued push for negotiated access while also thinking and exploring innovative and alternatives for access, including non-consensual ones, if this was, if, if it is needed. Um, there are obviously different ways that this could happen. This could be done by cross-border operations done directly by international agencies, uh, which has been done in the past, not only in Sudan, but also in many other areas um, and, you know, Syria currently and other places. Um, alternatively, there are current initiatives on the ground which show that engagement with local civil society and local NGOs um, is possible and there might be more indirect ways in which humanitarian needs could be addressed in this way. This could be, for example, by supporting local actors, many of which have a long history of humanitarian engagement and have received signif significant capacity building also during the last uh, war. Um, for example, supporting local protection initiatives, local, uh, local initiatives at um, ongoing, um, ongoing monitoring of needs. Um, there are a variety of ways in which this could happen, interventions to support markets, um, and generally the resilience of the population on the ground. Um, there are also, or many of the, of the people interviewed s said there might be ways in which um, one could work with so-called non-traditional actors, um, including faith-based organization, African or Arab NGOs, and others who might face less restrictions from the government of Sudan. Mm. Humanitarian engagement in such a complex and politically charged context will have to be innovative and flexible and locally responsive, and obviously cannot just end with access, but should encourage sustained engagement with both sides to the conflict, including trust-building measures to sustain access. And lastly, I think the key point is that a much higher and sustained senior level engagement with both the SPLM North and the government of Sudan is critically needed from the international community, not only on the humanitarian side, but also to facilitate a political agreement which is ultimately needed to um, address the root causes of the conflict in a comprehensive manner. And this was very much the hope from the last conflict, which is where, where you know, there was much higher sustained uh, high level engagement with, with all parties. Um, thank you.